Did you hear the air coming out of the yeah, markets oh my gosh, in the right. last two minutes? <laughs> Let's get right to today's action. Kimberly Foss is founder and president of Empire and Wealth Management, seeing the markets trending higher but remains cautious. She has three ways to make you money. And Larry Shover joins us from the pits of the sea. Larry, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm probably the only one talking. Look behind me. It's the dead of summer. I mean, let's face it. We're in a vice of just lack of liquidity, lack of attendance, lack of momentum right now. I mean, we're blaming it on these vague tapering concerns. We're blaming it on emerging market momentum and capital flight, et cetera, macro minefield that we're going to have in September. I mean, it's already a conclusion. So right now we're just tired. It's the dead of summer. There's no attendance. There's no liquidity. And again, I think I'm the only one talking on the whole entire floor. Well, Larry, I'm going to keep you talking. You know, yes, there's a lot of uh, very thin trading right now. It is probably the lightest trading week of the year. What's going yep. on with the yield on the 10-year, and is it over-exaggerated? It might not be over-exaggerated, but again, we have to go back, Ashley, that traders are concerned with the volatility of the Treasury. Most people think that uh, tapering is about 2.6 in a 10-year yield. That additional 20 basis points is all drama right now with the succession, with how much tapering there's going to be. So it might be overdone. We might see yields go back down to about 2.6, 2.7, given uh, how much they end up tapering, when they do it, and how they do it. Well, that, that becomes the question, Kimberly. Here, all of this drama that happened overnight in Asia, where you saw emerging markets really get hit, many different currencies, including G20 currencies, getting slammed, and, and all because of this discussion, not even the action of tapering. So what does it stand to do to our markets, and are we over-figuring, over-playing what the reaction really will be? Kimberly? Well, I, I do think, Liz, that, that most people are overplaying it, but that's the market, though, so we have to kind of pay attention yeah. to that as well. You know, we saw what happened in April and May and June, and, and, and we didn't even do anything. So this tapering, I think that the key to this is really what are they going to do? Where is the clear, concise plan? Where's the transparency of what exactly are they going to do? How are they going to do it? And, and how much? Once we have that plan set out, I think then the jitters will calm down. People will be more calm, uh, calm in the market. And, and the market will continue to rise. But without that transparency, there's a lot of uncertainty. And, and everybody's going to kind of have a knee-jerk reaction to anything that's set out of the, out of the feds. Well, Kimberly, you say that that market trend is higher, but do we have to see some sort of uh, correction? We've been talking about it seemingly for years, but do we need that correction before we make that next solid move upward? Well, I think in any kind of appreciating market, in any kind of you know wealth generating wealth for people's portfolios, you you definitely have to have you know two steps forward and take a step back. And we've had you know from the lows, we've had a 150 percent rise in the stock market overall, mm. and we've got to be able to kind of just pause a little bit, you know profits off the table and move forward so that we have a healthy gain in the overall stock market. Um, and, and that's why in my portfolios, too, actually, we really taper. We, uh, we don't taper. So we, we value, we, we tend to expose ourselves to that value sector to add that dividend income because my folks are all on income. And I got to tell you, ultra low interest rates, lack of GDP, unemployment is not anywhere near 6.5%. You know, where is that why, go? Sorry to interrupt you. Is that why you're picking telecoms? They're traditionally very nice dividend payers and players. So th there's that opportunity. You haven't seen any of them paring back their dividends. That's that's what I think is significant here. People can wring their hands over the 10 year yield getting so high and that this will hurt dividend stocks. But the yields are still coming through, are they not? Yeah, and I got to tell you, I know, but my 21-year-old uh, daughter continues to text and use her phone all the time, so my bill on Verizon just keeps going up. But it's kind of a little bit of a uh, plus because that dividend is a 4.3% dividend of Verizon. AT&T has a 5.3% dividend. That surely, you know, breaks the buck on the 10-year uh, the treasury, and you've got that growth perspective as well. So, so I like those. I like those telecoms. I also like energy as well. But, you know, Liz, we're completely invested all the time in 44 different countries in over 15,000 different stocks. So um, while we have a tendency to overexpose to value stocks to keep that dividend and keep that, that income coming in, um, we're still invested overall in the stock market in a balanced portfolio. 
All right, Larry, let me bring you in uh, just to pick up on what Kimberly was saying. Uh, do you like telecoms uh, for the yield, as uh, Liz pointed out, or, or is there somewhere else that you think is showing a lot of good value at this point? Well, for me, I like two different things. One, I like Europe. I think for all the sheer leading that's going on right now, people are severely underinvested. And keep in mind, Europe, by and large, up 8% on the quarter of this past quarter. It's got a long way to go. They are out of recession. I like the banking sector, especially the insurance sector in Europe. Here on our shores right here, I still like financials and materials. I know I'm sticking my neck out there, but I do believe over the long haul, we're in the baby steps of a recovery, a long-term recovery. It's not going to be as easy as it was the last six months to a year, but I do believe long haul financials and materials is a great place to be. Larry, we just had Don Schreiber on the air saying that he's expecting a 16. I, I thought it was 15. Now it's 16 percent correction. When I said when, he said now or in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Do you well, hear any rumblings of that, especially when volume is low at the end of the summer? No, I mean, I think everybody is talking about a 10, 15, 20 percent correction because we've gone up so far so fast. I mean, it's taken us 13 weeks to go 100 points in the S&P 500. So it seems like it's prerogative that we need to, you know, retrace those steps. But you have to answer the question, like, why do we have to uh, uh, correct? I mean, there's no good reason why we have to. I mean, we're in a multiples market. We're sub 14 multiples. And for those of you who don't really know what that is, that's not expensive. It's not cheap. We're, we're in a fairly valued market. So we don't need an impetus to correct or go forward. I mean, I think the market's just ripe to grind higher because so many people think we have to correct. Well, Kimberly, let me have uh, my question to you to finish this. You know, listen, September is not a traditionally very good month for stocks and equities at all. Are we getting all the bad news and all of this out of the way now? And do you expect better times ahead for September? Bearing in mind, we've got this big budget battle that needs to be resolved in Washington. Well, I think that's the big 800-pound gorilla in the room. What are they going to do? But the reality is, you know, folks are looking for a yield, and whether that be on a dividend or, you know, it's not in, it's not in bonds. So there is a lot. I agree with Larry. There's a lot of money on the sidelines, and it's just going to, you know, basically push this market ahead and, and move it forward. So I think in the long run, we still have room to grow. Whether we take a step back, you know, temporarily or not, who knows. But we certainly have a big 800-pound gorilla to be able to, you know, kind of address. But I think long term, guys, I'm cautiously optimistic you should have money towards the equities markets. But don't get caught. Don't okay. get sucked in and seduced into that side of overexposing yourself to the equity markets mm -hmm. yep. and then be hurt on the downside. Because at some point we will have some kind of a, of a market S retraction. Yes, yeah, certainly good advice. Larry, yeah. before mm -hmm. we let you go, you, you began by saying it was really quite quiet. Yet things got uh, rather <laughs> heated behind yeah. you nine minutes after the close. Can you just let our viewers in on, on what really goes on in a pit behind you after the markets have closed? Well, you know, after the markets are closed, people start looking at the looking around me and realize we have PMI numbers coming out. We have the Fed's uh, notes Minutes. coming out tomorrow. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a lot of things. We have three housing numbers coming out tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. And even though half the half the pit's gone on vacation somewhere and not many people are really exposed to the market, people are squaring up their mm -hmm. positions, taking as little risk as possible. Because if you're wrong right now, it's really, really hard to get out because there's no liquidity or very lack of liquidity. And, uh, you know, just the attendance okay. is very, very mm -hmm. small. So there you have it. Larry, thank you. We're going to see Larry in a You're few welcome. minutes when the futures close. And our thanks to Kimberly Foss. Can do. Thank All you, right. Lauren, very much. You hey, the S&P futures are closing in about 15 seconds. Let's head back to Larry Shover in the pits of the CME. Take it, Larry. Well, right now, is just, what you're seeing behind me is very indicative of what we see in August. I mean, we have a tidal wave of uh, macro issues co uh, coming down the pipeline in the next week, not to mention the next month. But right now, traders are realizing that we're in a consolidation mode right now. They want to see fixed income volatility temper a little bit. They don't care if the 10-year yield is 3% or 2.5%. We just need to see some tempering to get the next move in the S&P 500. Mm, okay. Larry, we'll see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Whom the bell tolls. As earnings season slows down,